Welcome back everybody. Uh, we're in video number two about our PCV relocation DIY. This video is all about the parts you're gonna need in order to basically remove your OEM PCV system, install these new parts so that you can have a serviceable PCV system from un out from underneath the supercharger so you don't have to tear apart your engine every time you wanna do it. So if you wanna see what parts you need and what custom parts you might wanna buy to make this job a little bit easier, stay tuned, here we go. Everything you see in front of you are gonna be parts that you're gonna to need to complete this project. And all of them you can pretty much get on eBay. You can buy stuff new, you can buy stuff from Alibaba, AliExpress, whatever you wanna do. You know, you're gonna be able to complete this project for anywhere from about four to $500. Uh, even maybe, depending on if you get some deals, anything as low as $350, all the way up to, I mean, potentially $600, depending on how you buy your parts. So let's go over exactly what you're gonna need. So the first thing that you're going to want to go to is you're going to want to go online and you are going to want to find a PCV from a 2005-2006 Audi A3 that kind of year. And by the way guys, if you look in the description, I'm going to have part numbers to everything uh, that you're going to need in terms of like OEM replacements, things like that. I'll have the whole part number listed. I might even have a link to a document that has everything detailed for this project. So I'm not just going to leave you hanging. Anyways, you need a 3.2 liter VR6 PCV uh, system. That's what we're replacing our three liter supercharged PCV system with. So the way that one works is it's a multi-piece system. Our PCV is just one piece underneath the supercharger. We're gonna take that out and we're gonna get this one. So this is a metal PCV uh, valley here and then connected to it on the bottom is the oil separator. The PCV is not actually located in this. This is just an oil separator. And what's gonna happen is, this is going to get put into the engine and replacement of our PCV. So you're gonna also need a gasket. And this is a metal gasket. You should never have to replace this. You are also gonna to need to get some replacement bolts. These are longer so that they can go through this because this is gonna sit just a little bit higher. Now, when you buy one of these, and this is metal, which is good because you're never gonna have to mess with this again. But when you buy one of these, it's likely gonna come with whatever oil separator was on it. I'm gonna replace this. You can also buy this separate to replace and it's only one, two, three, four bolts to pull off and then you can put a new one back on. So I'll have a part number for that as well. But when I say oil separator, think of this as the OEM catch can, okay? This is just something trying to separate oil vapors out of your PCV system. So you're gonna need one of these. That's the biggest thing. I got this one used on eBay for I think 40 bucks shipped. <clears throat> Once again, these are the PCV to the engine bolts to put this uh, metal, I guess you could call it like valley pan if you want to call it that, to connect that to our engine. You have to have a little bit longer bolts and the metal shield. Uh, beyond that, you're going to need a breather hose system from a 3.2 liter VR6 from the 0506 engine. And this is going to replace your spider hose that you have and this will connect to your valve cover gaskets. This is a knockoff one off of eBay. I wasn't going to pay the $150 for the OEM one. This one I think cost me about $25. Um, I know someone who's done this and they're using one of these and had no issues. So I got that. And then the actual PCV is right here. We call this a pancake PCV. That's all it is. This cost, this is once again, another knockoff one, but it's a super simple thing. I'll show you all the parts of this in a moment, but this cost me 15 or $20. And this is gonna be the piece that gets relocated out of the engine. We'll talk more about this later. Beyond that, you're gonna to have to make your own custom lines until someone comes out with a line kit, which there might be a couple companies that look into doing a line kit for this. So hopefully that comes to fruition. But this is steel braided line. This is from Evil Energy. I got this off of uh, Amazon and I think it was about 45 or $50. I think this is about 10 foot. Now we're gonna to have to cut this to create our own lines and you're gonna to have to have special shears to do this. R regular scissors and a razor blade isn't gonna cut. You have to have something and cut through this cleanly and uh, cut through metal. So you're gonna need that. Then you're gonna need all sorts of fittings. Now, you might not need all the fittings that I have back here. I got extra fittings just in case, but I've got one, two, three, four right angle fittings. I've got one, two, 45 degree fittings. I've got some straight fittings. I got five of these straight fittings and these are all 10 AN for the size. And then I've got four um, push to lock uh, fittings. And once again, I'll have uh, links for all this stuff in the description of this video. But these are what we're going to make our own lines out of. We're gonna cut this hose up and we're gonna create some lines. And this is what's gonna allow us to connect all these parts together. 
Uh, and in this video, I'm only going over parts in the basic layout. I am not going over putting these parts together. That'll be another video showing how to make the hoses and connect everything together because we're gonna have to modify some of these things. Uh, lastly, this isn't required, but I highly recommend it. Doing this setup is gonna allow you to run a functional catch can system. Thanks to the guys at Integrated Engineering, they sent over their catch can for us to use in this project. Super stoked uh, that they're investing in this to get this done, but uh, we've got their catch can. You use whatever catch can you want to. This one's really, really nice. I'm excited to get this on. And that's gonna allow us to get more oil vapor out of this before the return line goes back to the engine. So you're gonna have oil vapors caught in the OEM, uh, oil uh, separator here and then anything after that is going to get caught in the other catch can and that's going to get caught before it goes back into your engine and goes into your supercharger so we've covered all the parts needed to do this if you're going to want to do this in a fashion where you modify your supercharger if you do it without the pieces from merc racing you're going to have to have someone weld the oem pcv return line on the bottom of the engine shut and that can be kind of tricky. Make sure you get someone who knows what they're doing because it's all aluminum. And then you're gonna have to have someone tap in one of these 10 AN fittings into the back of your supercharger uh, past the throttle body. Once again, tricky. Make sure you, whoever's doing it knows what they're doing. But I highly suggest waiting for the Merc Racing parts and just making this a fully reversible DIY system. We'll talk about what those are in just a bit. Let's talk about the actual PCV. So this is the bread and butter of this DIY and why we are doing this. This is the piece that is actually getting relocated to make your PCV system serviceable without having to remove your supercharger. So this is a really simple contraption. There is an inlet and an outlet, and we're gonna have to modify one of these to uh, attach our hose to make this uh, doable for our engine, so to speak. And, but what you're gonna be able to do is, let's say this goes bad. We're just gonna swap this piece out. But one of these is gonna be pretty much permanently connected. We're gonna have to use some JB Weld and get a 10 AN fitting uh, attached to this. And so you're not gonna wanna throw away that bottom one unless you wanna read JB Weld your, your hose fitting and use a new 10 AN fitting every single time. But we don't wanna do that. So how do we replace it then? How do we fix our PCV if it blows? Well, it's super simple. If you look, there are these little tabs all the way around here. And you just literally pop these all the way around the edge. and it comes apart and that's it. So this is the part we're gonna keep. The spring stays in here. And then you just order a replacement one of these, which is like 15, 20 bucks. And you take this piece off, throw it away because it's busted, put the new one on and the new one just comes in here and it clamps on again. But you can see there's this diaphragm in here and that's the piece that usually goes bad, that tears somehow. And so this is gonna make you, or maybe take you 10 minutes to swap. You just take the new one, you take the top piece off. You're gonna take this, come back on, line up with the tabs and just press it back down all the way. There, I just replaced my PCV. That's as simple as it is, that's all it's gonna take. No more taking your supercharger off, having to replace all your supercharger gaskets, do all that mess, drain your coolant, all that stuff. This will be removed and put to the outside of the engine and you're done. Now let's talk about why you want to run a catch can of some kind. Like I said, we have the OEM oil separator that's gonna be located underneath the supercharger and you should never have to take that out unless you keep your car for hundreds of thousands of miles. That should be good for the life that you own the car. But we have an issue with our intercooler cores and our superchargers breaking down and failing, right? And that causes leaks of coolant into your intake manifolds, which causes your UPC light to come on and it can cause misfires and all that jazz. There's a lot of reasons that those intercooler cores go bad. One of the big ones is the massive changes in heat from going super hot to cold. But another one, another theory that we have is that oil vapors are getting sucked into the supercharger and getting pulled into those intercooler cores and adhering to those. And that might be contributing to them blocking up, getting gunked up and contributing to their failure. Because if you think about it, the OEM PCV just comes straight off the, the, the return line comes straight off the top of the PCV, that little stack and it connects to the bottom of your supercharger. So 
what we're doing here is we're gonna get rid as much of the oil vapor as possible, hopefully all of it, before it returns back into the supercharger. So that should keep your intercooler cores a lot cleaner and it should keep your intake valves a lot cleaner and hopefully prevent them from building up as much carbon as fast as possible. So while you're doing this job, highly suggest you get a catch can of some kind and you uh, throw it on while you're doing this process. I think it would be kind of foolish not to. We're gonna be working with some people to get a bracket of some kind made for the C7, hopefully for the B8 S4s, S5s, so that it's super easy for you guys to mount. Hopefully we'll be able to have a company or two have these mounting kits and whatnot available for you guys to purchase to make this just super, super simple uh, in terms of making this a DIY for you guys. Okay, so let's talk about the parts that Jose from Merc Racing is gonna make for us to make this job 100% DIY doable at home. So like I said, if you're not gonna use these parts, you have to permanently modify your supercharger by welding shut the return line underneath or the return port underneath your supercharger. And you have to drill and tap in a 10 AN fitting into the back of the supercharger past the throttle body for your new return line. So that's gonna make sure that you can't reverse this. You're gonna have to, if you wanna put it back to stock, you're gonna have to like trade that supercharger or sell it to somebody or just sell it as is. Me and Jose from Merc Racing and his son got on the phone one night for about an hour and a half on a video call just looking at the engine and brainstorming. And the first thing he said was, I can make a plug that will just go right into the bottom of the supercharger using the OEM gasket and it'll go in there and it'll seal it off, but you'll be able to pop it right back out if you want to in order to reverse it. So that, that, that's simple. So he's already got the design for that done and he's getting some of those made. The other thing was, how do we make the return line something that isn't permanent and what we came up with and you can't really see it just because I've got my intake and everything on here um, but this is your throttle body right here and if you look right there let's see if I can zoom in a little bit that piece right there is a spacer it's an OEM spacer that's all it is it's about a half inch spacer and so I saw that and I said Jose what would it take to create a custom spacer that has a return line and that's what he's done. He's already got the designs done. It's gonna be a spacer that replaces the OEM one there, so it sh and it's not gonna be big enough to affect any of your intakes or anything like that. You just swap that spacer out, and it's gonna have a line on there for the return line coming off your catch can or coming off your PCV if you don't run a catch can. And then you'll just be able to run that line straight to it, and now you've got your return line and the port plug for the bottom that you can do at home without having to permanently modify anything, and you can relocate your PCV by yourself. So. That's really, really, really exciting. Can't wait for him to have these done. He's really close to having these done and we'll be able to actually get this project underway and come to fruition for you guys to see and for you guys to do at home. So, lastly, let's kind of talk about how this is gonna look in your engine bay. Um, remember, underneath here is your PCV, right? It's located directly underneath your supercharger. So where are we gonna put the new PCV that it gets relocated to and where are we gonna put the new catch can? Uh, I haven't exactly figured out what I want to do, but a couple things that I've noticed. So I've got my Merc Racing uh, divorced, uh, I'm sorry, supercharger divorce setup uh, reservoir here. And we have a custom created bracket that connects down into your uh, frame rail down there. So I can't use this spot for my catch cam. But what I did notice is this hole right here. That is a threaded hole. I'm gonna find whatever kind of bolt that threads in there and it's a perfect big square piece there and hopefully have someone fabricate a bracket that I can sink a screw through right there and set the catch can right there. I think that's gonna be a perfect spot for it, nice and out of the way, easy to run a line to. You could always remove this shielding back here and put something back there if you want to or if you have an open intake uh, system over here where there's, you know, the box, you could potentially run over there if you want to, but that's where I'm gonna go for mine. The actual PCV, the serviceable piece that we're gonna be replacing. I know that uh, Christopher May, the guy that I actually saw had this done, he has it just kind of resting right here above the oil filter housing. And that might be where I put mine. I feel like with this thing, I'll be able to, if the line will come out and I'll be able to kind of put it somewhere anywhere in here and maybe even just zip tie it to something to hold it in place. Cause it's super light. It's not putting a lot of pressure on anything, but I'm gonna take a little bit of time and really look at it and see what the best option for it is. Um, there might even be a chance of running the line through the false firewall here and putting it underneath there out of the way. We're going to take some time to look at that and really figure out the best place for it, but it will be off in this area somewhere. So that's nice and easy to get to, to access, to replace, so that this job is well worth it. 
Okay, so if you guys have any questions about the parts needed and you know part numbers or how to locate these things, if you need links to them, let me know. Like I said, in this description, I should have a link that goes to a Google document that actually has links to these parts. Um, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, email me, audic7owners at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this done for you guys. Uh, but yeah, thank you once again for helping me complete this project. Thank you to Jose at Merck Racing and the guys who are Integrated Engineering for also investing their time and resources into this project. Really looking forward to getting this done for you guys here in the very near future so that you can get this stuff and so that you can do this. Like I said, the last two videos that we have coming out, one video is gonna be showing you how to put all the parts together. That's making the lines, putting it all together, JB welding the fittings to the parts that need to be done and showing you how it goes together. And then the final video will be actually installing the system, removing your own PCB system and putting the new PCB system in while relocating the actual serviceable piece. So thank you guys once again. Thank you for your patience with this. Can't wait to get it to you. Like and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next video.